that situation in their adulthood which makes them victims yet again, even to the point when they become victimizing other people, they still claim that they're the victim. That they are the ones who can't control themselves because you're making me hurt you, you're making me hurt you, you're making me enraged, you're making me lose control. Do you ever feel as if you were part of a plan that somehow there's a plan in motion. I do. I feel as if my hope for a better day will come down. I feel as if there is a plan in motion for my salvation, my liberation from slavery, oppression, grief, hurt, pain. I feel as if there's a plan for relief. Relief. I realize that I'm not the first one who's had this feeling. This is an ancient feeling of all men. They pleaded for a Messiah, a Savior, someone who would come and who would liberate them from the oppressors. So this seems to be a repeating saga throughout mankind history. That there will be something or someone, a hero, who would come and save us from this. That there will be some measure of purpose for all of the chaos and stress and anguish that people suffer. In uh, nuclear engineering, we have a, a means or procedures by which we can start up a nuclear reactor to bring about a controlled chain reaction, a chain reaction of nuclear fission. Fission is a release of neutrons, uh, that will collide with other neutrons in order to bring about a sense of more action and interaction so that there are more neutrons to be absorbed. The more neutrons are absorbed by the uranium, the more action they carry, the more energy is being released, and when they release the neutrons, they continues to interact and interact and interact. We have to get to what we can call a critical mass. A critical mass of neutrons, source neutrons. These source neutrons then can bring about a chain reaction. So like watching a pop that you of water that you want to bring into a boil. And you, see, you turn it on high and you're watching it and you see oh there are little bubbles, little bubbles at the bottom. And those little bubbles, as the heat increases, you realize that those little bubbles are turning into bigger bubbles, and then the bigger bubbles bring more heat, and it comes into a superheat situation when you have oil. See how phase change happens from liquid gas. You have to get to a point where you have a critical mass of bubbles. We are in a time now of a great awakening where people who are realizing that there is a plan by, by forces that are against us, a plan is in motion and has been in motion to keep us oppressed, to keep us down, to keep us suffering, to keep us in fear, to keep us separated from one another, to hate one another on account of, I don't like the way you your hair is, I don't like the way you wear your clothes, I don't like the way you, your eyes are slanted, I don't like the way that your skin is darker than mine, I don't like the way you're, whatever it is they don't like. It breeds about hatred, segregation, envy, jealousy, and greed. We see it played out in St. Paul this morning when he says, they went 
to the synagogue, the Jewish church, and they preached the kingdom of God that had come in Jesus. And they preached that he was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And that he was the Holy Son of God, as revealed by God the God of Moses. This is my beloved Son. And they preached the Holy Spirit of God, who will come and awaken us and blows as the wind into our lives and gives us gifts of spirit and insight and wisdom and prophecy and other mm -hmm. spirit gifts. They preached these things to the Jews and they were rejected. And so they started preaching them to everybody else, the Gentiles. Because they got so much attendance, they got so many people coming, the Jews were jealous of them and set about to destroy them. This time that I'm talking about is where people are realizing that the obstacles and the plan to destroy them, to destroy them, to bring us off set and off balance, to keep us oppressed and slavery mode to create greater wars and greater wars and greater wars, to create more money and more money and more money controlled by a certain few designed to keep us down. Jesus began by preaching that you are blessed by the kingdom of God. He has come to visit you and to give you insight and to give you healing and to save you from your own sins and from the, to liberate you from the oppressor. But well, by what means? Is he got some sort of crane that will lift you up and set you over here sometimes? But what is that designed to bring about? That is designed to bring about an awakening in you that says, what picked me up? And what set me down? What saved him? What healed her? What did, what, by what means did this happen? Is to get our minds wondering, wait a minute, maybe we're not victims anymore. And when we get to a point of a critical mass of awakened human beings, we realize that we're already free. This is the purpose of Christianity is to awaken you to the reality of your own existence. Who are you? What is the plan of you? The great plan is underway. The great plan of, of saying we're going to send out and bring the, the truth of the one God, the belief and faith in the one God, reinforced by all the miracles and healings, and to bring about a great awakening in the people. And that there is a plan, and you can trust that plan. The plan is preordained by God Himself, and it is preordained for you. You say, well, I understand the plan involves me. And I understand the plan says that no matter what happens, I have to forgive those sins. No matter what, I have to forgive them. No matter who does it, I have to forgive them. No matter what happens, I have to forgive. That is my mission on this earth, is to learn to forgive sins. That is my mission on earth, is to heal. You can't walk. Well, you cannot heal without forgiving. If we hold hatred in our hearts, we are shackling ourselves to hatred. But if we are liberated from it, and we say, I forgive them for they know not what they do, we are now a, an awakened spirit, an awakened spirit that realizes that we have power over death to lay down our life and pick it up again as an offering, sweet smelling, to God. Because, aha, now we get it. And the more people we have awakening to these truths, the more the awakened 
of the human race, the more critical mass we've had, and find out that we are now all the breed. We are the whole human race changes phase from that which is flesh to that which is spirit, from that which is darkness to that which is light, from that which is sin to that which is holy. The purpose of Christ coming to earth is nothing less than this great awakening to begin to fulfill the plan to that point and to begin the plan from that point to this point. And we are in the age of mercy where we stumble and fall and beg for mercy for our own hatreds, our own harms that we've done to other people. And we beg for these things as we then receive the healing, we are then showing mercy to others because we know how it is, brother. We know how it is to hate. We know how it is to wish harm on other people who have harmed us. We know how it is. And the greater the harm done to us, the greater our love for him. Because the
as an image, it's a characteristic display. A character, characteristic display and something that you recognize. A characteristic display is something you recognize as if you're looking into the mirror. Oh, I recognize that characteristic display. It's a characteristic display of light reflecting off of you, reflecting off of the glass, reflecting off of the silver behind the glass, and reflecting back to your eye. It is an image that is reflected. It is in an image of what is the reality. Well, what's the reality? If we have as our basis for our existence being made in the image and likeness of God, then what does that look like? What is the image? Or is it a set of characteristics that we can recognize when it's finally revealed to us? The truth of you is that you are a subset of the image and likeness of God and we all make up the image of God. We are a pixel. We are a pixel in the great mosaic that is God. It is image, likeness, is characteristics. If you say, well, each one of these little pixels has a unique little dot in the universe, well, that is true. That is you. There are no two pixels exactly alike in any given image. The plan is for you to come to awareness of this. And that the spirit of forgetting which is imposed upon you by those who would keep you under their control, under their obedience, for their profit, for their gain, for their pleasure, this is but a means by which you can be compelled to seek out the answer as to why there is suffering in the individual. Okay. Suffering Produces movement. It is a stress. It is an impetus. It is a cause which brings about an effect. And when people get tired, enough people are awakening to the fact that some people can be healed and others are not. Why are some people healed and some people are not? Is it because we believe in this particular faith or not? Yes, it's because we believe in forgiveness. We figure out that these are energies that we have concepts that God has given us for our understanding so that so many people can now understand whether they be Jews or Gentiles, Greeks or Romans, doesn't matter. Africans, it doesn't matter. All made in the likeness of this and engaged in this plan of awakening. People tell me all the time that I'm talking over the heads of people. I don't think so. I think you're quite intelligent people and quite able to understand that when you have been living a life of suffering, so much so that you now produce your own circumstances which continue the suffering, and all it requires is your desire to stop it, that you can stop it. If you are a self-defeating person, engaged in self-defeating behaviors, then it is up to you to make a choice to stop that and you come to the realization, what am I doing to myself? is working out in each person. The Great Awakening is happening, and I would submit to you, as I've said before, there are more awakened people now on Earth than any other time in history. There are mass communicating now. 
And so we have so many millions of people who are aware of the plan, and they trust the plan, and they trust that God is a savior to reveal this plan to each of us so that more people can adopt the plan for themselves, the plan of liberation. The plan that says, oh no, I'm tired of that. You're not going to do that to me anymore. I'm not going to do this to myself anymore. I'm not participating in death and destruction. He gave this beautiful example for us that we can use as a paradigm, an example, something we can incorporate into our own lives, that, he can, that we can suffer the greatest suffering like Christ on the cross. And that we can use that, as I said last week, to turn the liars on their head, to be able to turn those who have, are convinced that they have now killed us and to, to show them that, no, we are very much that we do not depend on this, their belief in death, that we reject their belief in death, that we only now acknowledge phase transition and going from one state of view into another. Jesus' plan for us is the great plan. The great plan to take the gospel of life and liberation from slavery to sin and death and fear into the whole ends of the earth and beyond. So that we can take it so that more people, generation after generation, can come alive and say to faith, I forgive you. That we are no longer victims of the belief in condemnation. We can liberate ourselves from anguish by becoming deep ends of life, peace, and forgiveness of sins. Absolutely. The great awakening. A couple weeks ago I talked about I talked about uh, the caterpillar that becomes the butterfly and flies away and fulfills the destiny. And I described the struggle of it. But I didn't describe the feeling of flying. It is as if you are free from gravity, that you are free from the things that hold you down. You discover a way to lift yourself up and see things from a whole new point of view. Imagine how that butterfly feels. Imagine how the bird, when he takes out of the nest, from fear, get out. They have to fly. And they fly and they're like, wow, I was so afraid. Imagine from the point of view that your point of view has changed from down here to up there. I know all of you are living in airplanes and you look out the window and say, wow, oh, look at all those people, they look like ants. And we're somehow detached from all of them who are fighting and arguing and shopping and making war. Such 
a beautiful experience to become in the, in the heart of Jesus that you can really express it. Poets can. Mathematicians can. The idea is that we can only say, I know what love is. I feel it. Every time I look at you, I feel it. Every time I listen, I feel it. Every time I can come to your energy and my energy and I can feel what love is. You mm -hmm. are that is in your midst that when you awaken to it, you will know something to do with what has happened to you. And this is my prayer that once you realize this, that what has happened to you, that is so wonderful that you can carry it out with every person and the more interaction like this creates the nucleus oil, which creates the chain reaction, which creates the vision where the energy of the whole world is the Thank you.